Today is March the 22nd. How important are we in God's work? Let's find out together as we study Exodus chapters 32 to 34. Today I'd like you to take the time to read Exodus chapters 32 to 34. There we see the story of the golden calf and everything that happened after that. So in Exodus chapter 32, we see the story of uh, the golden calf. The people come to Aaron. Moses has now been gone for some time, for uh, almost a month apparently. And the people say to Aaron, we think Moses has died, make us some gods that we can worship. Aaron says, well, give me your gold. They do. And Aaron uses the gold to manufacture a golden calf. The Lord now says to Moses, you best go back down to the people. Uh, they have uh, strayed. They have created false gods. Um, the question comes, why a bull? Why would they make a golden calf? There are some who think that it may be related to uh, Mesopotamian uh, uh, imagery. They see Baal, the god of the storm, the god of thunder, the god of the sky, standing on top of two bowls. Now, I've read some who believe that this is a reference to the Mesopotamian gods. Personally, I don't think so. Israel has not had a chance to interact with uh, the, the, the Canaanites, the people who would worship Baal. They just came from Egypt, and in Egypt, the god Apis was a prominent god. Apis was a bull. They would actually keep a bowl, and for the lifespan of the bowl, about 20, 25 years, they would worship that bowl. When that bowl died, they would actually mummify that bowl, and that bowl would take its place along with Pharaoh as a god in the Egyptian pantheon. Now, Apis, um, as a god of Egypt, emerged from the fires of the sun. It's interesting that that is exactly what Aaron says. Um, Aaron says, they gave me in verse 24, I told them whoever has gold jewelry take it off when they brought it to me. I simply threw it into the fire and out came this calf, Apis. Apis as a bull was uh, that they would, on a yearly basis, bring the bull from the temple of the sun god and have him run through the fields just before the Nile would overflow its banks and fertilize the fields along the Nile. They thought that Apis was the one who would bring that rejuvenation and that fertilization. Apis brings fertility and new life, just as Israel has now left Egypt and now looks to have new life. Personally, I think the uh, manufacture of a bull harkens back to Egypt, to what the Israelites would have observed on an annual basis, the running of the bull through the fields of the Nile so that uh, the Nile would overflow its banks, fertilize the land, and they would have food. Well, Aaron uh, creates that uh, uh, golden calf, and as a result, Moses took the tablets. Now notice in uh, Exodus chapter 32, 16, the tablets 
were God's work. The words on them were written by God himself. When Moses looks at, at Israel and realizes what they've done, uh, chapter uh, 19, when they came near the camp, Moses and Joshua, Moses saw the calf and the dancing, and he burned with anger. He threw the stone tablets to the ground, smashing them at the foot of the mountain. So Moses took God's law, and he said, essentially, you don't deserve the word of God, and he destroyed it. Now, there's a punishment that ensues. Moses calls those who were faithful, and he says, uh, go through the crowd and kill those who are responsible for asking for the bull. About 3,000 people died that day. The Lord says to Moses, uh, I'm done with with this people, I'm just going to take you and make a great people of you. Moses intercedes for the people and God does relent. And um, God comes to Moses and says, I will make a great people of you. Chapter 33, verses 1 to 11, God says, I will no longer go with Israel. But look at what happens in verse 12. One day Moses said to the Lord, you've been telling me, take these people up to the promised land. But you haven't told me who you'll send with me. You've told me I know you by name and I look favorably on you. If that's true, that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so that I may understand more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember, this nation is your very own people. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you singular rest. Everything will be fine for you, Moses. And then Moses said, oh, but if you don't personally go with us, not just me, but the entire people of Israel. Don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. And the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you've asked, for I will look favor favorably on you, plural, and I know you, plural, by name. Now in verse 34, there's a new copy of the book of the law. This is kind of uh, the book of the law part two. Uh, some of the laws are repeated. Uh, there are some new things that God says, but as he says this, he talks to Moses, and Moses' face begins to shine. How important are we for God's work? Apparently very important. Moses interceded for the people of Israel, and God relented, and he said, okay, I'll go with all of you. Moses carried God's splendorous, presence. I don't even know if that's a word. But God shone as he talked to Moses, then Moses went to talk to the people, and his face shone as well. How important are we in God's plan? Extremely important. God works his plan through us. Find out your place in God's plan today. Let him work through you. Like, follow, and subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Tomorrow, we'll ask the question, are we supposed to fear God?